But okay, Mark, let's move on to the final part of the podcast where we're going to be ranking some or giving our top five who we <laughs> think is going to be the top five wide receivers for next year. And before we get into the actual names and who we think is going to be great, you will start off with you. What is the criteria for you for this guy is going to be great next season? Yeah, you know, you got to take a few things into into account. You got to look at the yards, of course. You got to look at touchdowns. You also want to look at, you know, how often they're getting the ball. But I think really what it comes down to is kind of who is that number one guy? Who are you? Who is the quarterback relying mm-hmm. on? Who is going to be, if there's nobody else, or even if there is double coverage, I come from Chicago, we know all about double coverage, and you do it anyways. You throw the ball in there anyways, and yeah, they Chicago, still being manage Chicago to get tough, it. right? Yeah. You say, you know what? I don't care. Triple coverage, Brandon Marshall's <laughs> going to catch it anyways, the, and the, he will. The old Brett Favre method, method of, up. Oh, you're triple teamed, I'll, I'll slice it through that needle hole. I'll get it in there, <laughs> and you do. That's how it's done. These are That's kind of, you know, there's a lot of different ways to take it and a lot of things that might put a guy in the top five list because of his touchdowns or because of his yardage, uh, and that alone might get him there. But I'm really trying to look at all that, combine it a little bit, and see who's going to be that number one guy for the team which I think is important, mm-hmm. and just who's going to be one of the NFL leaders. Yeah. You, uh, could, you could talk about fantasy, too, if you wanted, but I'm going to kind of leave fantasy out for Yeah, now. fantasy, to me, doesn't matter here. How many fantasy points you got, It like The Rock would say, it doesn't matter, but I look at the total yards. Ricky, how many fantasy points you got? How many fantasy points? A big old it zero. It doesn't matter how many <laughs> fantasy points you got. Zero, but I—, I I look at yards, but for me, touchdowns kind of trumps yards because putting points on the board is more important than how many yards you rack up. Also, to me, and with one of my guys, I will say this kind of goes against him, and maybe you may say, hey, you know what, this guy's don't put him in your top five for next year because he is a lower, but yards per game. Yeah, Yards per game is big because how much it's – not just, oh, well, I had over 1,000 yards, but I'm averaging like 50 yards a game. So that means, okay, you had like two big games, mm-hmm. and the rest were just mediocre. But let's get into it. Mark, who are your top five? We'll, we'll look well, at We'll your, just talk about the guys. We'll, we'll talk about the guys. Not in any particular order. We'll talk about who the number one guy is. Later. Later. Because I think when it comes to the five, it doesn't really matter what yeah. the order of them So we'll are. talk about, you'll name your five. You'll talk yeah. about them. We'll so don't worry about the, about the order that I'm listing these guys in right now, everybody. Don't freak out yet. So the people I'm going to put in there, going to put Julio Jones. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put Odell Beckham Jr. I'm going to talk about Brandon Marshall. Going to talk about Alshon Jeffrey. It's going to happen. And then Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper's getting in there. And I want to point out, want to point out, Des Bryant, no. Antonio Brown, no. Not in there. See, Amari Cooper was the one. He was re- he's the one I was referencing with the yards per game mm-hmm. because he had over a thousand yards receiving during as a rookie, but he only averaged sixty six point nine yards a game. Yeah, and he only had six touchdowns this year. So I mean, I'll be honest. I'll I'll give a little sneak peek. Amari Cooper is in my five as well, but I think for Amari, it's more of a potential type thing. It was mm-hmm. only his rookie season last year. And yeah, and you're Carr definitely looking so, ahead to the future. Like, they're going to do so, like, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, Carr and Cooper, they are past their prime. I will tell you what. Mm-hmm. You're hoping, yeah, I think me, you and I both are looking at this and hoping it's going to continue on yeah. in the future. He had 1,070. Now we're looking for 1,200, yeah. 1,300. That's where we think it's going to really start to go. Uh, I mean, you want to talk about guys who get the ball thrown to him. You know, Amari Cooper's going to be up there. Not this past year, he was you know not one of the highest guys getting the ball thrown to, but he's made a name for himself. Mm-hmm. Him and Carr are going to be comfortable with each other this coming year. I I didn't really mention that you know well because I did the guy who gets the ball thrown to him counts, but yeah that's going to be something I think that is going to rise so much of Amari Cooper. He's going to be that number one guy without a doubt because who you know it's the Raiders. They got to throw the I ball mean, to they somebody. Did, I mean, Crabtree did do well, but Amari is going to be the number one guy. Mm-hmm. He's the deep ball threat, and I mean, like I said, with with Amari, it's potential. That's the thing. I mean, it was only his rookie season last year, and if I mean, if you look at 
other rookie seasons of was it the greatest rookie season? Probably not, but it over a thousand yards your first season is pretty damn good. I mean, if we look at I'm gonna take OBJ as the microscope, he had one thousand three hundred and five, so about mm-hmm. three hundred more yards than Cooper had. He had around the same amount of targets as a rookie. However, he caught the ball 20 more times of those targets. He had 12 touchdowns and an average of 14.3. So he had double the touchdowns of Cooper. So OBJ had a little bit of a better rookie season than Amari Cooper, but Cooper had a better average. He but if averaged you look, almost if, a full yard more. What well, you want to look at, too, you want to look at that projection. You want to see mm-hmm. what comes next, and that's where it's good. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. getting 150 more. He's getting another touchdown out of that. You know, that's what we want to see. If we can see 150 more yards out of mm-hmm. Amari Cooper, if we can see a couple more touchdowns out of him. Yeah, and I mean, if you look at OBJ, and I mean, not every player is going to have the same projection from season to season. I, I read off his rookie numbers, but this his sophomore one this year had around the same catches, but had an increase in yards, an increase in touchdowns. He had an mm-hmm. increase in average. Things were going up. And, OBJ. and of course, we got to look at these two things. Uh, you know, we can talk about Odell Beckham Jr. a lot, but he also had more helmet punches on Josh Norman this year. Correct. More than <laughs> I think, more than anybody else in the NFL, led the league in Josh Norman punches. But the Raiders are just average team. You know, they were a seven and nine team. Yeah, they're they when it comes to passing yards a game, rushing yards a game, points do you scored. Take, do you all take of it's that into average. consideration as well? The what team do you play for? And it's like, oh, well, you, you did you did good for your team. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm thinking, well, not necessarily for your team, but I'm looking at what is around you as well because uh-huh. that's the type of situation where the team is just kind of average mm-hmm. getting better. If the team is going to be average and getting better, I expect that wide receiver to get better too. And I am taking into a, you know account what it's going to be for the team Yeah, for him. So that's why I think, you know, Amari Cooper is going to be one of those big ones there. And he's going to be great. Now, in all actuality, you know, is he going to be one of the top five guys? He's going to have a harder time being one of the top mm-hmm. five guys. Uh, you know, Antonio Brown's going to have an easier time doing that, and I'm leaving him out. Des Bryant's well, going to have an easier time if he's healthy, and well, I'm leaving I'll him just, out. I'll just throw out there, out of our five, OBJ, Brandon Marshall, Amari Cooper. Those are the three that we have mm-hmm. exactly the same. The two that I have that you didn't is I do have Antonio Brown in there because, I mean, second he had the second most yards this year, had the exact amount of catches and less targets than Julio Jones, had two more touchdowns, and fumbled the ball less than mm-hmm. Julio this season. Another guy I have in here, and it's kind of a smaller team, and a lot of people may be saying, what, really? Allen Robinson from Jacksonville. Yeah, you love Jacksonville. On 80 catches this year, of course he had 153 targets, but on just 80 catches, he had more yards than Demarius Thomas, who had 105 catches, more than Larry Fitzgerald that had over 100, more than Jarvis Landry, who had over 100 receptions. Mm -hmm. He was right behind. He was 50 yards behind OBJ this season, had 14 touchdowns, which... Out of everyone in the top ten is tied for number one with Brandon Marshall, who just had a ridiculous season yeah. with Fitzmagic in New York. And this is another one of, it's kind of the Amari Cooper argument, but tenfold. Because he has the 1,400 receptions, he actually does have double-digit touchdowns. Mm-hmm. And that's a guy where, and a team like Jacksonville, in a little bit of a better place than Oakland, hopefully, but... It's one of those things where I think next year could be a breakout year for Allen Robinson. Yeah, for sure. Um, those Both those guys, Amari Cooper and Robinson, are having those potential type of things. That's what we're getting. I think we both threw one of these guys in there, for sure. Uh, although, I guess you threw a couple. Uh, so, we'll we'll see what happens with those guys. Those guys you're hopeful for. But when it comes to... You know, a couple people I'll mention, Des Bryant and Alshon Jeffrey, mm-hmm. uh, even though Des Bryant's not in either one of ours. Those are both the injury guys. We'll see if they bounce back. If they bounce back, things will be good. You know, the only thing that will hurt Alshon Jeffrey really is going to be Kevin White. 
if Kevin White is healthy and he's playing for the Bears, yeah, Alshon Jeffries' numbers might go down a little bit. But you expect him to be the number one guy. You don't expect him to get 1,400 yards necessarily uh, when Kevin White is there. But maybe, you know, maybe not having Matt Forte stealing some of those catches. Maybe some more of them mm-hmm. are going to go to an Alshon Jeffrey. Uh, so maybe that'll help. The one thing I will point out, even though Brandon Marshall is on my list, I definitely would not expect another 1,500 yards. I wouldn't expect that at all because, you know, Fitzmagic took the world by storm, somehow did not throw as many interceptions as Fitzmagic likes to throw until the end. The mm-hmm. end, he definitely made up for quite a bit. I don't expect to see that same kind of production out of him. I really don't, and I would be surprised to see it. No, Brandon Marshall's going to get quite a bit. He's going to get a lot. You know, He's going to be Brandon Marshall. He's going to be triple covered and still catch the ball mm-hmm. somehow. He's going to be in the end zone, still reach up there and just grab it. But I don't think we're going to have that same type of production out of the mediocre quarterback play that is kind of more average for Fitzmagic. Yeah, and I mean, one of the wider... Because our big difference was I had Antonio... Basically, Antonio Brown for Julio Jones. Mm -hmm. You think Julio Jones is going to be the better wide receiver next year? I'm putting my money on Antonio Brown. Of course, he's got to come back from that perfect concussion, but I think he'll do that A-OK. And then we have Robinson for... I can't remember who your other one was. I don't think you... Who did you not... You didn't put Alshon in. Yeah, okay, so it was yeah. Robinson for Alshon mm-hmm. were the mix-up. And, I mean, I could see that because, I mean, with Allen Robinson, it's kind of the same thing with Alshon. You talk about, well, if Kevin White comes back, he's got to compete with that. Well, Allen mm-hmm. Robinson have to, has to deal with Allen Hearns. Is Allen Robinson the number one wide receiver? Yeah, probably over Allen Hearns, but Allen Hearns is still a quality target in Jacksonville. So it kind of feels like with us we agreed on OBJ – Brandon sure. Marshall, and then the potential of Amari. And then we just went with different places. Mm-hmm. You with Julio, me with Antonio, you with Alshon, me with Allen Robinson. There's one guy both of us left off, though, and that's Dez. Is that because he was injured this past year, so we don't have that frame of reference from this yeah, year? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple things for me. His injury being one, mm-hmm. uh, Tony Romo's injury being another, because... It, you hate to say best wide receiver and then talk about the quarterbacks, mm-hmm. but if Tony Romo's not going to be there and we're going to be cycling guys in and out trying to throw the ball to him, you know, that's going to that's going to lower it. They had Kellen Moore this year. Yeah. Matt Castle, Brandon Weed. Maybe they'll have Johnny Manziel out there. Who knows? But, you know, if you have one of these guys out there, it definitely hurts the production for a guy like Des Bryant. Someone else that was hurt that neither one of us have on there, for good reason, Jordy Nelson. Neither yes. one of us put Jordy Nelson in there. Well, I mean, the Packers are, and they proved it this year, where they don't, it doesn't matter who they have at wide receiver. Aaron Rodgers is going to throw to any of them. And really, mm-hmm. to me, if I was going to say who's the number one target in Green Bay, well, yeah, Jordy Nelson comes in and it'll probably be Jordy again, but it's Richard Rodgers. Really? Richard Rodgers had a better yeah. year to me than James Jones or Randall Cobb. If you ask me who is the number one target in Green Bay, I'm going to say that guy wearing green. Yeah, no, it's anybody. Or yeah. white, depending on where Yeah, they depending are. on what day it is. But it's, or that weird, ugly brown color that they or wear that weird, Or don't they have a yellow? I don't think they have a yellow jersey. They got like that yellow and brown uh, like striped yeah, thing. That's right. Or the blue one. The blue yeah. one with the brown helmet and the uh Yeah, they get some the ugly jersey circle. options. Well, it, it was... It's Green Bay. It's, it's the yeah. old days and it's Green Bay and they suck. Yeah, they're the worst. They're the worst. Literally the, the worst Packers. team in the NFL. But, I mean, to me, I feel like, yeah, Aaron Rodgers is going to throw it to anybody. Mm-hmm. It's one of those things that's kind of like why you never pick a Saints wide receiver. Yeah. Because I know Brandon Cooks is good, but Drew Brees is going to throw it to whoever's same open. With, same with Tom Brady. Yeah. Same with you well, know, let's, equal Manning. Let's be honest. Tom Brady doesn't have the best, except for yeah. Edelman. He doesn't have the best wide receiver. Hey, he receivers. had Randy Moss one day. Don't forget about Randy Moss. Yeah, Man. I you know. I'm Randy talking Moss. about this year. It's, it's well, yeah, we're just Gronk, talking about in general. Except for Gronk and Edelman. This I mean, year remember Wes Welker with. was once a star True. wide receiver. True. You know. But when Edelman. He makes him whoever he wants. When Edelman's injured, who are you going to throw? If Tom Brady Danny wants Amendola? you to be a star, he's going to turn you into a star. You know what's another guy ne- neither of us put? And, I mean, some people may put him in there. Jeremy Macklin had a good season with the Chiefs this year. Yeah, he did. For sure. You know, but the Chiefs are one of those teams where you think about them and you think about the run game. We, we've got, and I mean, it's five spots for wide receivers, so it's kind of 
small pickings. Here's the snubs if you're like, who who did Ricky and Mark snub out of the top five? Mm-hmm. Demarius Thomas, A.J. Green, I'll throw Jeremy Macklin in there. Doug Baldwin, who had 14 touchdowns as well. However, only had just over 1,000 yards receiving. He did pretty well, but the Seahawks are, he had to because Jimmy Graham didn't show up. Yeah, they traded for him, but they he never he never him. came. But before we end the podcast, we got to talk about, and I feel like we're going to say the same answer out of our list. Who's who's going to be the number one receiver next year? Yeah, pretty obvious consensus, Odell Beckham. Yeah, I mean, Odell Beckham hey, you're right, it's Allen Robinson. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, it's OBJ. OBJ yeah, I mean, there's no, sure. there's really no question about it. Uh, even though I think, you know, I look at the teams that are here. Chicago's not going to be one of those teams. Mm-hmm. The Jets aren't going to be one of those teams. The Falcons aren't going to be. The Raiders are not. You know, your Steelers that you have Antonio Brown in there, they're going to be competing. Antonio Brown may be a better fantasy option than OBJ, but OBJ mm-hmm. is going to be the better wide actual yeah. like wide receiver. I really. You know, it, it's a surprise turnaround. It's a quick turnaround. But I think that the New York Giants actually, this is early, and I'm not Ricky Widmer. I don't like to make bold predictions early. Yep, I do. I but love them. the bold New York Giants Monday. legitimately have a chance to compete for the big game. Uh huh. I'm not going to say what the big game's name is because I'm not Ricky Widmer. The Super Bowl, you but can say it. they got the you chance to compete it's, it's the Super Bowl. for the game that the Super shall Bowl. not be mentioned. Super Bowl 51. You can say it. It's okay. Not prepared to do that yet. <laughs> Super Bowl Fifty One. It's it's okay, Mark. Against the Patriots, who they will probably beat, <laughs> because Tom Brady signed a two year extension. We contractually had to mention it sure. in the podcast. Are you are you sure it's uh, not going to be Falcons versus the Patriots in Super Bowl Fifty One? No. Mm, Falcons no going to come nowhere near that. No. 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 Julio, Julio doesn't get a Super Bowl. You know what? He's got time. He's only twenty seven. He can get a Super Bowl somewhere. Okay. Doesn't necessarily have to be over Atlanta. You know. Atlanta's not – I'm sorry to Atlanta fans. You know, I know you guys were 500 last mm-hmm. year, but I don't see things going up too high for you just yet. But that's going to do it for our podcast this week. I want to thank you guys for listening. If you're on SoundCloud, hit that nice little like button, that little heart. Also hit the repost button. That looks like the retweet button on Twitter. If you are on YouTube, hit the like and subscribe button. Make sure to check out me on Twitter at Ricky Widmer. Mark is at the – with two E's, Mark Weber, Most Valuable Podcast is at Most Valuable Pod. Make sure to check us out on iTunes, mostvaluablepodcast.com. We're also at our Patreon page where you can help and support the podcast and make sure we're able to keep bringing these to you guys each and every week. We love you guys, the fans. We love everyone who listens to our podcast each and every week. I want to thank you guys again for checking it out, but as always... Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for listening to this MVP podcast. Follow us on Twitter at Most Valuable Pod for more great podcasts.